so we're in Sarah Brer's studio on the northern edge of Kyoto in the Kamigamo area. And it's a beautiful wide open space and let me give you a little shot of the whole studio. And then we're going to go downstairs and she's going to tell you a little bit about her new works. Which one should we start with? Uh, let's start with Echo. And this is this is brand new? Yeah, this is brand new. This is one of my larger indigo pieces. Uh, I'm working with the motif of the moon, and I'm also adding the uh, architectural element of the uh, kind of a window, grid, a sort of pattern that repeats that's not completely even. And one of the unusual aspects of this piece is the translucency. See how you can see through this layer of paper? Uh, the paper is uh, dyed in a kind of folded technique. I dip it into indigo pigment, and it makes this irregular gradation and checker-like quality, and then I lay it right into the uh, wet paper. How long did a piece like this make you to, or take you to make? Well, I actually worked uh, on this piece for about a year because it went through a limbo period where I didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> so it, worked, it took about a year. That's on the long side. And 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on over you know, right. right next to Echo. It's another new piece. Yeah, this is very new. Uh, actually, it just came out of the dryer yesterday. And it's called Merlin. What can I say? It's kind of a fun piece. It's uh, about night and looking through space into other space. Moving along, uh, I did another new great paperwork by Sarah. This is also in the Indigo series. It's called Indigo Moon. Uh, I'm working with a Japanese window motif. And if you look at this piece closely, you'll see an almost square-like shape in the middle. And to me, that's the area where the window might open. So I'm referring to that. There's a little place in the, in the architecture where you can actually open it. So even though in the piece it is not open, in my mind, I want the viewer to have the feeling that you could, could open move through right into the sky and the moon. And I've done that a bit here on the sides, too. You get a second layer of the shoji window. So how, how long does it usually take you to come up with these ideas? Is it more you know, something spontaneous, or is it really calculated and you, have, and you take a while to get this vision and then, and then you work to get it on paper? The, uh, you know, the ideas are ongoing. So, for instance, this is part of the same series as Echo we just looked at. But I'm trying different variations. And so I might have the idea for a long time in the back of my mind. And then I'll see something that makes me want to jump in and work with it. And in this case, it was this very thin Tengu paper that is so thin, it's thinner than like tissue. And it's a special paper that's made only in Japan. And I realized that I could actually take the Tengu paper, make my own patterns, and then incorporate them oh. into the, the Moon series. Correct me if I'm wrong, but all, or if not all, most of these pieces have many layers, correct? Right. So you, you mentioned earlier that you spend hours upon hours you know, going through different pieces and You'll fix, put one layer on top, decide you don't like it, so you'll, you'll move them around. 
Right. Yeah. Right. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So that's kind of an interesting process. Actually, come over here, and I'll I can give you an example. The the next piece that we're looking at this is called non zenji, and it refers to the uh, large arches and very massive architecture that's part of this temple. When I was making the moon for Nanzenji, I wanted a really big moon, and I wanted a certain texture on the moon. But these particular, I guess you could call them vertical, um, to me they're like architectural elements. They occurred by the way I just placed the strips down uh, over the moon. So it wasn't predetermined. And I tried a lot of variations, and then I looked at it, and I found one that that spoke to me. And so that's often how I'll I'll start with uh, composing an image. This is called Windows, and if you look closely, you'll see that there are many small bits of color that see if we can pick that up on the camera some of them are metallic some of them are indigo etchings and working with a uh, gridded fabric I wanted to bring your eye through the hole as if it was a window out into uh, the space beyond it's kind of a playful piece so this is, is it called the hand series or? This is called Many Hands. Many Hands. And by, you know, you, what do you have, uh, 12 different, you know, 12 separate images in, you know, the main piece. What were you trying to achieve and, you know, I guess maybe explain a little bit about the hands and you know, all the different movements you have going on. Yeah, well, this is a, a series I did using my own hands as a mask. And so what I mean by that is when I etched the plate, I used my hands uh, to create a shadow on the plate and then etched that. And what I was interested in was a, a movement of the hands against the light. And so in this piece, I took all the different variations I, I made when I was editioning the image individually and put them all together. To me it has a very interesting rhythm, almost like birds fluttering or, you know, it kind of moves it beyond just a, a pair of single hands. Do you, want, do you want, you know, the viewer to get a different feeling from each set of hands or were you envision it envisioning the piece more of something where it's 12 separate pieces but one whole and you get just one general feeling from from the image? I think it's a little of both. Uh, your eye should move around and enjoy each panel individually, but it does also work, uh, I think, as one full image and as you, especially viewed from a distance. And the different light on it. There's a lot of iridescence in the piece, which if we tilt it, may be hard to see on the uh, camera. Perfect. What's this piece called? This is called Red and Yellow Umbrella. Red and Yellow Umbrella. And this is this is pretty old, right? Yeah. This is uh, about ten years old. And it shows the early uh, use of washi as a printing background. Pieces actually printed onto the washi and then adhered uh, through layers. That's very nice. Very nice. I wanted to take a look at a couple pieces on the ground right now. I don't know if you want to hold those up. This one, this piece is, is brand new, correct? Yes. And did you decide on a title yet? 
still over. This we're one's still it, up in there. We're calling it the heart for now, but it re refers to the red accent in the bottom right corner. But I need to think about it. Sometimes when the pieces are very new, I haven't yet titled them. This is really, really, really nice. I wanted, I wanted to sh show some people something a little different than maybe you've done in the past. So do you want to hold that up? Now this this is this is also brand new. Now I could be wrong, but have you worked in oranges and reds before? I have. Uh, this is a logical progression from the moon towards the sun. And uh, I started this piece in the winter, and I just needed to go with a warmer palette. It was actually really a challenge because as a as a subject, the sun is more difficult. Like it's more difficult to look at the sun than the moon. Are there are many layers. This is a lot of layers in this. Oh yeah, many layers of color that are glowing through the lattice work of the etching that goes over the top. This is its companion. It's called Apollo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we have the Apollo male god and. The, the last one was called Amaterasu, which is the uh, the sun goddess in Japanese mythology. So here I've combined the element of uh, rushing water with the glow of a morning sun, using the washi as a way of kind of looking through a paper window where you get a certain uh, frame from that. But it's not so literal, so that you're actually going also into this. For me, it's like a waterfall uh, beyond the window. Moving this way? Yeah. Just wanted to grab that one really quickly. You know, I thought this one was interesting just because you can look at it, you know, in your own personal way and it, it, it can kind of be whatever you want it to be but it's you know it's, it's very you know, simple and I think uh, very aesthetically pleasing is, is, does this piece have a title it's called quest quest 